Hello all, this is Michael Wolfer and I have the privilege of addressing a topic related to the process complexity continuum. This is based upon figure 8.4 in our text, Business Process Change by Paul Harmon. In many organizations, a manager or senior level executive may understand there is a problem. She may form a team to investigate, gather information, and analyze what is wrong with the processes currently in play. This informal method is simply in response to a manager knowing or believing something is wrong, though the specific nature of the process or activity that is causing the problem is not fully understood. As a first step, one method to begin understanding the scope of problems is to identify the complexity of the processes. This will provide a means to better understand the processes and provide opportunity to identify methods to improve. As seen from figure 8.4, processes can range from simple to very complex. This range forms a continuum. Let's break this continuum down to see the types of processes and where they may fit on the continuum. As a matter of interest, I will be using examples from the natural gas industry, where I have over 20 years experience, to articulate the differences between the levels of complexity. Simple processes are those at the far left of the continuum. These processes are those that typically follow a sequential or step-by-step -step process. They are usually well-defined and lack branches, decisions, and exceptions. Typically, they are based upon few rules. Examples of this include reading pipeline pressures or monitoring engine statuses used to push gas throughout the pipeline. Moving down the line, we have more complex processes. These tend to be less defined and may draw on many rules or decision points. They also involve branches and exceptions. Examples of these include analyzing pipeline events and alarms. The complexity of these processes come in the decisions that may be needed. If pressures are too high, an event is triggered and a section of pipe may need to be shut down for safety reasons. On the far right side of the continuum, we have the very complex processes. These are unlikely candidates for automation. They change and evolve over time, and they tend to require a great deal of initiative from a human performer. Examples of these type of processes may include bringing in a new gathering field where drilling is underway, and communications to hundreds of wells require a new construction. The complexity of these processes are a far cry from the simple monitoring of pipeline pressures mentioned earlier. As we evaluate the complexity of processes across the continuum, figure 8.4 highlights the automation opportunities that may exist for the processes on the left side of the continuum. For those processes that are simple or have few decision points and branches, automation is a real opportunity for process improvement. I would add an additional notation to figure 8.4 that of the human performer initiative. As processes become more complex, the need for a human performer and knowledge is increased. Based upon this continuum, I pose the following questions. How does understanding the complexity of a process aid in business process improvement? And secondly, does complexity automatically mean there is room for improvement in the process? I thank you for your time and look forward to our discussions.